Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some Puyo Puyo Tetris. Uh, this isn't a first look, I've played this game a lot. Uh, if you look at my uh, my profile here, 70 hours or more, I'm, I'm a big fan of Puyo Puyo Tetris. I just want to give you an idea of what it's like and show why it, I find it so compelling. Um, Tetris. It's pretty cute, as you can already hear. Uh, it loads very quickly too, as you can see. Puyo Puyo Tetris! Um, you can jump straight into a game of one of these three modes by picking this bottom option here, or you can go into the main menu. Uh, so the game has a lot of different modes and stuff. Uh, I would probably recommend starting with the adventure mode because that basically teaches you how to play both games and gets you a good idea of how it works. Uh, it's also quite long. Uh, you can see there are 10 acts, each with 10 levels in. So if I just flip back to the beginning. Uh, I can demonstrate how it starts out. So basically, yeah, you've got 10 levels, 10 acts each. Uh, each one has... This is not good. Fully voiced cutscenes. And I'm in some weird place. And I'm all alone. This is so not good. They're really good. Hmm. Unlike what Ringo said. Great a girl in a non-form fitting outfit has materialized aboard the SS Tetra. I believe she is currently performing an improvised alien comedy routine. Beep, beep, beep. Don't be hasty, yo. Something about this seems not normal. I am unsure what our next course of action should be. Um, <clears throat> you there. Huh? He's wearing some really tight-fitting clothes. And he's trying to talk to me. Wait! Someone sent those squarish things that brought me here. I bet that someone was you! Uh? Sounds like the only solution here is that we should battle. Wait, what? The girl is in a panic, but perhaps a battle might be the best course. Basically, they solve everything with battles. Think you could go a bridge but with uh, Puyo Puyo and Tetris instead of cards? So, you know <laughs> match them up and make them disappear too? Of course I do. Are you ready? Let's do this! Tetris time! Puyo Puyo time! It's on! What? <laughs> she doesn't play Tetris? He doesn't play Puyo Puyo! <laughs> So yeah, the cutscenes are really funny, um, the, the writing is great, uh, the acting is great, um, the animation's a little eh, but it's okay. Um, and then you get into actual gameplay, basically uh, each mission you have to do a certain task, usually it's just winning the battle. You have to play as a certain character in mission mode as you can see, we're playing as T right now. Uh, it changes around as you go, uh, basically for the first act you just play Tetris, so if I start it up. To get an idea of what the game looks like, the controls are very good. Uh, I'm using the D-pad on the left Joy-Con right now, you can also use the analog if you want. Uh, and you can use a Pro Controller if you prefer, the analog, prefer to have you know, a proper D-pad instead of the little buttons that the, the Joy-Cons have. So there's a lot of options to play with. Uh, you can also customise the controls, there's a bunch of different mapping options available. Uh, and yeah, it plays like Tetris, everything seems to work the way it should. I'm not really a Tetris expert, but the Tetris part of it seems about right to me, so... Tetris. And when you do something good, your character has a little voice clip, which is pretty cute. Uh, each character has different voice clips. So, yeah, basically it's a fairly traditional Tetris game mostly, except for the Puyo Puyo parts. <laughs> um, and the main draw, I think, is that the presentation is so very, very good. Uh, everything looks fantastic. Uh, the audio is great, the visuals are really, really nice, very colourful. Uh, I'm not playing very well, but you get the idea. I'm kind of talking instead of focusing on the game, because, you know, I'm trying to do a review here. Uh, there. Yeah. Uh, you have access to holding pieces, that's done with the ZL and ZR buttons, uh, to hold a Tetris piece. You can customise most of the controls, not all of them. I believe there's a bunch of like set mapping you can work from, but I think that covers most set of, like configurations people are going to want. And the music's really, really good as well. 
I assume these tracks are from the other Puyo Puyo games. I've, this is the only one I've actually played, so I'm not familiar with that series as a whole. This is the first level, so it's not going to be too hard, but you get the idea. This is how the Tetris part works. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty easy. There you go. I never back down. And I've got two stars, that's not great. Uh, this credit system is used to unlock some optional extras, basically different textures for the, the pieces and a couple of different voice clips and stuff. Nothing important. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about we that. Were still able to battle, even though he was using blocks instead of Puyos. And he's not too bad. You can skip these cutscenes if you don't want to watch them, just press plus or minus. But I think they're pretty really good, so I'd recommend before. watching them. Huh? You don't know what a Puyo is? I do not. I have a great deal of questions for you. But first, let me introduce myself. I am T, and I am the captain of this vessel. So you get the idea. Um, I have the ability there are, there's a lot of cutscenes to go through. Caminos. You can just speed it up a bit if you don't well, want to wait for them to talk. So those like round this. Things are... uh -huh. and... uh, so that's an option too. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of courses available in this adventure mode, which I would recommend going through because that unlocks some stuff in the rest of the game. Uh, the main like meat of the game, though, is this arcade mode over here. Uh, so you've got a bunch of different game types. There's Versus, which is basically when you play in Versus mode, each player gets to pick if they want to play Puyo Puyo or Tetris. And so it's a really good mode for like multiplayer if some players prefer one game over the other, or vice versa. So you can go, you know, you can pick the mode you want, and you can pick the mode that your CPU is going to be playing. If you have more players, obviously, you know, the more players get to pick what they do. Uh, Fusion is... A really hard mode in my opinion. Um, basically what happens is you have one board. I'll start a game of fusion to give you a look at it. Uh, you already saw Versus so I won't bother making another game of that one. Uh, so what happens is you have one board each and you start dropping Puyos down. Uh, you can play Puyo Puyo normally. You also get the hard drop feature. Pressing up makes them drop real fast. Uh, you also get these ones which can be changed through different colours rather than rotated, which is interesting. And sometimes, uh, Tetraminos fall down instead of Puyos. And it's on the same board, which makes it really confusing and difficult. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get the idea of that mode. Um, I, I find it really hard to, to figure out what's going to happen in some cases, uh, because of the way the Tetraminos and the Puyos interact. This mode's not used very much in the story mode. Uh, it shows up near the end. It is one of the hardest modes to play, I think. So, that makes sense, I reckon. Um, but yeah, you get the idea of that mode. Uh, then you've got Swap, which is probably my personal favourite mode. You have one board for a Tetris, one board for Puyo Puyo, and every 30 seconds of gameplay, it switches between playing one and playing the other, basically. So if I just launch that up, uh, you can't fight destiny. Can just demonstrate what that's like. It randomly picks one of the two to start with, but you can play regular Puyo Puyo. Again, the controls are very good. You don't get hard drop in this mode by default. Uh, you can turn it on if you want. You can customize a lot of stuff. So if you do want to be able to hard drop in Puyo Puyo, you can do that. Uh, I believe that the reason it doesn't do it by default is that normally Puyo Puyo games don't have that feature, but this one does. So if you want it, you can have it. And then yeah, it just flips over to Tetris, the music changes, and you start playing Tetris instead. Uh, the other board keeps running in the background, although Sorry. more pieces won't fall except for the one that already fell when you got started, basically. Um, but that, was, that was vague. What I mean is, if something was already falling when you swap the boards, it will keep falling, otherwise it doesn't. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you can play Tetris as well, you can play both games. It goes back to Puyo Puyo, so basically the first person to lose on either board, they just drop out. So, what, if you happen to be losing on one board, you can jump to the other board and avoid losing that way. Uh, which is kind of handy, and I like that this lets you play both games without making either of them really confusing. Which is the way I think Fusion is. I can just, see it. It's just a lot it's more fun to play. Uh, nice. Get my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my goodness, that's not good. Horror I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, then there's party mode, which I don't think works very well, but it's kind of fun. Uh, basically, in this mode, you can't die. Uh, if your board fills up, it'll just clear and give the other player a score bonus. Uh, you can pick one game or the other, like in versus mode. Uh, I don't Puyo. Yeah. I'm here. There we go. And in this mode, uh, basically, as well as having the like drop normal droppables, you have these items that appear. And when you clear like a, a chain of uh, Tetraminos or Puyos next to an item, it will activate and mess up the other player in some way, basically. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate that if I can. Yes, there we go. As you can see, that made them have a searchlight thing going on, which makes it harder for them to play. Uh, which, of course, is handy for me. Frozen Puyos, which can't be cleared. Yeah, there's a bunch of different items that can be accessed, basically, during the play. Uh, and if your board fills up, that is about to. They don't die, it just keeps going. After giving me a point bonus. Pretty simple. You unlock the um, more interesting characters as they appear in the story mode, basically. So you have to play the whole thing in order to get everyone. I think there might be other ways to unlock the characters, but story mode is probably the easiest way. So yeah, you get the idea of party mode. Uh, it's not too complicated. It's fun. It just, it just behaves a little strangely with the items and stuff, I think. And some of the other modes, I think, are a bit more consistent. Uh, in terms of play, rather than a little bit random, which I feel this one is a little... It's okay. But yeah, I get the idea of that one. Uh, then you've got Big Bang. Uh, if you're familiar with the, uh, I believe it's called Fever mode in Puyo Puyo, uh, this is the same thing, but there's also a Tetramino mode to it. Uh, the Puyo mode works fine, the Tetramino mode I think is too easy. Uh, I'll just demonstrate why I think it's too easy by starting it up and giving you a look. I don't intend uh. to lose. I don't intend to lose. Yeah, Draco's my favorite character, she's so cute. Here we are! Goo -goo. So, uh, basically, the Tetris one, it just generally is super obvious where to put your Tetraminos, as you can see. Whereas the Puyo one requires a lot more thought, and generally is harder. Uh, the later parts of this require things like Peach Bin, but the early ones don't, and you can usually get enough points from just the early ones to pull through and win, even if the other player is doing okay, so... Yeah, um... It's a forward game mode, but if you, both, if you both play the same type of game, it works pretty well, I reckon. It just doesn't mix them very well. So yeah, as you can see, very, very, very straightforward on one side. Much trickier on the other side, because you need a lot more forward about what to do. So yeah, you get the idea of that one. Um, then you've got this challenge section, uh, there's just a bunch of like specific modes here. You've got Endless Fever, which is the same mode we were just doing, but it's just Puyo and it's better. Uh, single player, you've got a time limit, you've got to clear as much as possible. Uh, this one is just Puyo until you die, so you get the highest score possible. Uh, this one's similar, but with tiny, tiny Puyo, so there's more room on the board, basically. There's a few Tetris modes. Uh, sprint, you get exactly 40 lines, you want to clear them all as quickly as possible. Marathon, 150 lines, you want to get the highest score possible. And Ultra, you have 3 minutes, you want to get the highest score possible. I don't know why there isn't an endless Tetris mode, it seems like a weird omission. Because it's an endless Booyah mode, but no endless Tetris mode. I don't know. Um, uh, then you've got the multiplayer mode. Uh, you can play multiplayer with single Joy-Cons, I believe. Uh, you can see the challenge modes aren't here, but everything else is still here. And it works the same way as the way we just saw. Uh, 
There's an online mode, which, you know, it's got matchmaking and stuff. It's fairly similar to the regular multiplayer arcade. Same sort of modes available. Uh, the lessons I didn't really bother with. The games aren't hard to learn. Um, I'd never played Puyo Puyo before, and just going through the adventure gave me enough information to figure it out. Uh, the whole first act is just Tetris, and then the second act you just start playing Puyo Puyo, and it's it's not complicated. Like, you saw what I was doing, it's not it's not hard to figure out the basics. You will get better at it as you play, I had to play for quite a while to manage to get through some of the harder parts of the adventure. The difficulty ramps up quite a lot near the end. Uh, but it's good. Uh, let's look at the options here. Uh, you can look at your play records here if you want, the, s the stuff you've done. Look at these. Huh. I need to play some endurance matches and stuff. Uh, I have done that. Why haven't I gotten that award? Maybe I need to watch the ending again or something. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, you can see there's lots of little awards and stuff. Uh, just like a sort of achievement system, it's not too big. Uh, here you can rewatch all the cutscenes and stuff if you want. It's kind of useful because you don't see the opening here when you start Act 1, like, Level 1, which is what I did earlier. Uh, if I play it now, you can see this is something different. It's such a peaceful day! Uh, basically this explains how Ringo got into the spaceship in the first place. Uh, it's not too important though. Uh, I haven't done anything with replays yet. Uh, in the options here, there's a lot of stuff you can customize. You can change, this is just your default character basically, and when you go online, that's the character that shows up. Uh, you can turn the HD rumble on and off. It starts off for some reason, so I recommend turning that on. It's pretty good. Uh, ghost piece is good. That's like the preview of where it'll land if you press the hard drop button. Uh, chain animations, I, I guess I want that on. I'm not really sure what that actually does. Uh, here's the control settings. So the defaults are like this. Uh, they're pretty comfortable to use, and I would recommend that. Um, but you can change it around, reversing the um, rotation controls, if you want. Uh, you've got arcade controls like this, so I think the idea is if you have a special arcade style controller, this is what you should be using, but I don't, so kind of pointless. Uh, then there's ones where you put the controller on the table and play it that way. Uh, same basic idea there. Uh, then you've got these expert controls, which actually put the, fast, the hard drop button on the R button, or the fast drop? I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, that's just fast drop. That's not hard drop. I don't know wh why you would want it that way instead of pressing down. I guess that's something that experts do. <laughs> and you can reverse that. There's also a one-handed mode, which, as you can see, just uses one uh, one um, Joy-Con. It looks super uncomfortable to play, though. I don't know why you'd want to play like that. Um... You can also play with a sideways Joy-Con, but then you don't have any any digital control. You have to use the um, joystick, in, the analog stick instead, which doesn't work so great in this game, in my opinion. Uh, here you can customize what, what visuals to use. You can't see them on the screen, which is a bit weird. So it's kind of hard to tell what, what you're going to get when you change it, but I guess it's okay. Uh, what's this? Oh, yeah, let's you customize. In matchmaking, you can choose what modes you want to play, so you can turn off things you don't enjoy, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, that's the options. Uh, this is the thing you spend credits on. You can see you can buy a bunch of different art styles for the Puyos, Tetraminos, and voice clips for various characters. I prefer the defaults anyway, but I bought everything, so it doesn't really matter. Um, what else is there to discuss? Uh, might just jump through a bit more of the adventure mode to give you a bit of an idea of what happens. So this whole first act, this is all Tetris gameplay. So there's a Tetris vs. Puyo Puyo, Tetris vs. Puyo Puyo, Tetris vs. Tetris. You can see there's a whole bunch of stuff that's mostly... Oh, uh, you get to start Puyo Puyo here, actually. I thought it was in Act 2, but no, you started at this spot. Uh, that's when you start playing both games. You get an idea of what Puyo Puyo is like. Then in Act 2, uh, more Tetris, more Puyo Puyo. So it gives you lots of different gameplay as you go through this mode. Uh, this is where Swap starts, I think, just here. And you can see there's a lot of narrative too, there's like a whole bunch of different characters you're fighting against and different stories being told. And yeah, there's a lot of acts here, so there's a lot to this game. Um, I still haven't managed to 3 star a few of these, they're quite hard. Uh, basically, what you've got to do is score like something significantly higher than the win condition. I think it's 40,000 points for that one, to get it 3 stars. That one you can do under two minutes. Can't quite manage it. 
So you can see it's getting harder, obviously, because there's things I can't do. Um, this is the best one, because that's the one where you, where you beat Draco Centaurus, and you get to meet her, because she's the best character in the game, and I love her. I'm going to just launch this one so you can hear it. Roar! Where am I? Nothing about this place looks familiar. And where'd all those weird blocks come from? There's no water. And no food. I bet I'm super duper adorable as a damsel in distress. <gasps> little thing. I wonder if I can eat it. Pee -pee! Hey, sorry, pal. But it's survival of the fittest out here! Pee -pee -pee -pee! Draco is such a mood. Oh my god, I love her. <laughs> um, this one is actually the best place to grind credits in the entire game, I reckon. Uh, because it is Big Bang Mode, the one I showed was really easy for Tetris players, and you're the Tetris player, and you can rack up, like, a really huge score very, very easily, with very little effort, as you can see. Uh, so I would recommend playing this mode if you want to get the credits and buy everything. Uh, like this particular act, in fact, just because it gives you so many more points than everything else in the game. <laughs> So you get the idea of how this works. Um, eventually it's going to start requiring T and L spins, but it takes a while. There we go, now it's requiring. And yeah, you can say that's super duper easy. Points, but I'm still winning by a huge margin. Um, and yeah, this is what Big Bang does when the timer runs out. Both players just explode, and whoever got less points gets blown up. Uh, sometimes they won't die in one round, and you have to keep going if you didn't get nearly enough points. Uh, but you can say that gives you a lot of credits, and you, it takes like one minute, because it takes one minute. So that's the fastest way, I think, in the game to actually grind credits if you want to buy everything. By going through scene five seven over and over again. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, what else do I need to mention? I think I've covered pretty much everything. Swap is definitely my favourite game mode. Uh, since you get to play both games, neither of them are too confusing. Uh, lots of options. Uh, I actually show off some of the like, handicap options and stuff because I didn't before. Uh, so on this screen you can customize some stuff, you can go over here, change the kind of videos you'll use. Oh, it shows the preview here. So yeah, retro is my favorite, but you can change it to a bunch of different things. Uh, it can be little Sonics, which is funny. Uh, I believe that's the default, Aqua, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, and Tetraminos has a bunch of options too, for some reason there isn't a pixely retro one that matches the other one. I don't know why, because they should be. Just so you can be consistent about it. Mm. Oh, and you can change the music if you want. You turn it off. Uh, in some of the modes you can actually pick which music to use, but this one has pre-configured music because it uses different music for each set, set section of the game. So, yeah. Uh, you can customize this too. How many matches you have to win. Make it one, two, or three. Uh, you can adjust how long between swaps whether you can do hard drop and quick drop, whether you can hold a piece in Tetris. And here's the handicap option. It's kind of confusing because of the way there's a name. You've got medium, spicy, sweet, medium. <laughs> sweet, medium, spicy is the option. So sweet means um, it's what you should give to a less good player. It, it's like it gives them an easy mode. Uh, spicy is giving the player you set it on a hard mode. It's kind of hard to tell. It, like you might think it means the other way around. But yeah, so you should give less good players sweet and m more good players spicy, and that should balance things out. 
Uh, so basically what that does, there's a couple of things it does actually. You can see, if I start it up, you can take a look. Uh, I didn't actually do that. Um, but in, depending on the game mode, I think it does some different things. Sometimes it will give you some garbage blocks to start with, which makes it much harder, uh, obviously, since the other player doesn't start with any garbage blocks. Uh, it also changes which colours of Puyo you get. I think it does some stuff in Tetris too, but I'm not really sure what. So yeah, you can see um, my pieces are falling a bit faster without me pressing the button. And I'm getting, I think, more colours compared to the other player. Uh, which means it's harder to make a match, obviously, because more colours means more likelihood that the colours aren't matching. <laughs> I'm not sure what it does in Tetris mode. But yeah, the option is there, so if you want to play with someone who's, you know, less experienced, you can, and it'll work out pretty well. Uh, I messed that up really bad. <laughs> As you can hear, we're getting a lot more voice clips now because the other player is actually doing some stuff. It's pretty cute. Um, Draco's voice clips aren't my favourite, but I just like her character so much. I mean, you saw that cup scene. <laughs> But yeah, that's um, that's for your, for your Tetris. Um, basically, the game's presentation is gorgeous, and it's a fast, it's a really good implementation of Tetris, and it's a really good implementation of Puyo Puyo, and they're both great puzzle games in their own right. So, I would recommend playing this game. Uh, oops. And yeah, it's super duper cute. All these little animations everyone has. Uh, I was distracted by talking. <laughs> But yeah, the controls are very, very good. Even though you haven't got a real um, D-pad on a Joy-Con, uh, it still feels really good just with the buttons it does have. And if you do want, if you do need a real D-pad, you can use a Pro Controller, which does have a real D-pad, and it's quite good. So, not something to worry about. Uh, it's also okay with an analog stick, but I think it's much better using the digital controls in this case. Just because of the nature of this kind of game. Da, 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 da. Uh, if it wasn't clear, the way Puyo Puyo works is you want to stack it up so that when you clear one set of uh, one set of Puyo Puyos, it makes another set fall and also get cleared. That's called a chain, and that's the best way to get a lot of points and to you know to defeat your opponent and all that sort of thing. I think it's kind of clear from the visuals, but yeah. Uh, whereas in Tetris, I'm sure you know how to play Tetris already, so I won't bother explaining it. <laughs> because Tetris is kind of the most famous game in the world. <laughs> Arguably, anyway. <laughs> um, it just, just keeps going until someone actually loses, so... This may go for, on for a while, but I think I've finished at least one game to give you a full idea of what the, this mode is like. Uh, it's got a three chain there, which is pretty good. Obviously, the longer the chain, the more points it points it's worth, and the better it is in general. So, you know, go for long chains. <laughs> uh, put that over there. That over there. And yeah, if the other player is getting close to dying, uh, they they say stuff like close call and it's cute. Uh, your player says that too, I believe, if you're close to dying. I just got a four chain, so I'm probably about to win. Yep. Uh, but of course it's two matches to win, so there'll be one more deciding match. Um, but yeah, you basically get the idea. Uh, again, this game has four player multiplayer, so it's really good if you want a puzzle with some pals. Uh, you can go into versus mode if some players like Tetris better or they like Puyo Puyo better. Uh, both games implemented very well. 
and are very playable. Uh, you can play on teams as well if you have more than two players. Uh, so that's useful if you have one really good player and a bunch of not quite so good players. Handicap feature is also good for that. So, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, there's a lot of options and customizability that this game offers, and I'm really glad of that. <laughs> it's great. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's that's the game. That's usually the game. That's got a nice two chain there. Uh, so yeah, you wanna usually if you get a line piece right at the beginning like this, you want to hold on to it for a bit and use it later. Uh, that was terrible. That was like a really terrible move on my part. Hang on. Let's see if I can recover from that. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm using quite better than this, but you know, I'm talking, so it's kind of distracting. Yeah, the music is great, the visuals are great. Uh, I mean, it references with all pixely, but it normally looks quite sharp and, and well-defined and all that. I just like it retro. <laughs> uh, and the controls are very, very responsive and good. Uh, Gameplay is top-notch. Obviously, it's, you know, Puyo Puyo and Tetris. They're both, like, world-renowned well puzzle games. They're fantastic games. So, of course, it's really good gameplay. Um, I prefer this over uh, Tetris 99, which you may have heard of. Uh, that's the uh, Battle Royale Tetris game they released for the Switch. I significantly prefer this game, both because you can also play Puyo Puyo, which you can't do in that game, uh, and because the presentation is just so much better. Like, this game is so bright and colourful and fun, and it's got all this lovely music, and it's, it's just, it's a lot of good. <laughs> uh, whereas Tetris 99, uh, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's not appealing to me visually or auditorially or just in terms of the general presentation. This game is just fun and cute and colourful and very, very good in that way. Tetris 99 is, is not. So I would recommend this game over that one, uh, although this game does not have an endless Tetris mode. That game doesn't either, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, then, um... That's Puyo Puyo Tetris, and I think it's fantastic, and I would recommend playing it, because it's very good. Um... I think I've shown off pretty much everything at this point. It's quite... It is a little annoying navigating between the acts here, because you have to do it one at a time to jump through. Um, there aren't that many of them though, and you won't need to navigate like from one one right to the other end very often. And you can jump like that around the whole list of acts if you want to. Um, so yeah, that's um that's Pio Pio Tetris. It's a game that I think is fantastic and that I recommend you play because it's very, very good. Um, I think it's on other platforms as well. I would probably recommend getting the Switch version just because I think the Switch is excellent. Um I don't know if the other versions are different, better, worse, no idea. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with this version and I think it's a great game and would recommend you play it. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a great cast of characters. About half of these are new to this game. They're Tetris specific characters, I think. Basically the ones on this side of the board are Tetris characters. Uh, Z-I-O-T-S. You can see they're named after the Tetris pieces. <laughs> uh, and a bunch of these others are Puyo Puyo bands, um, standby characters who've been in previous games. Like Ringo, and I don't know any of these characters, actually. Uh, Amity, uh, Sig, I believe all of these were in previous games. Uh, Ellie, Shezo, and I, I, guess, I guess if you're a big fan of them, you might already know that they're good, but I don't know them. Um, Cue the music. And everyone's got Let's play together. Everyone's got nice voice clips. Time. Uh, I'm not a fan of Echolo, but whatever. <laughs> here I come. I'm here. 
Oh, there's also a sound test mode, actually, which is great because all the voice clips are so cute. Uh, you can come in here. I think it's this section? No, it's actually in the theatre. Uh, you go to theatre here, you can scroll across from the... So you have the adventure set, the cutscenes. You can also go to audio here and play... Solved it. Got it. Any clip you want, basically. Oh, yeah. Right back at you. Sign. Cosine. Cosine. Tangent. Tangent. Algorithm. Algorithm. Cute. Calculus. Calculus. Ringo is adorable. Uh, and yeah, all the characters are here, so you can listen to any of the clips whenever you want. I don't know why this is a feature, but it's cool. Inferno! Hear me roar! Dragon Claw! Dragon Tail! Minerals! Symmetry Strike! Ice Storm! Everyone's in here. Oh, these are the alternate voices. Cosine. Yeah, I think that it's basically slightly higher versions. Solved it! Got it! This is exciting! I don't know why they have these two versions of everyone's voices. I, m maybe it's a more popular version in some previous game, and so they decided to include both. I don't know. This is exciting! <laughs> right back at you! Sign! Cosine! Tangent! Algorithms! I think a regular voice sounds better, but that's just me. Calculus! You can hear it's the same, same like, lines, it's just that she sounds a little different. Calculus! I like that one better. I don't know, that's just me. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Puyo Puyo Tetris. It's a really, really fun game that I love, and if you enjoy puzzle games, if you enjoy Puyo Puyo or Tetris, then you should play this, because it's both of them, and the presentation is spot on, absolutely gorgeous, and incredibly pretty and fun to play, and appealing to look at. And the controls are great, as I've mentioned, and the story is great, like, it's a very simple story, um, despite having, you know, seven to ten acts, uh, there isn't really that much narrative involved, but the character interactions are really cute, and the, di the writing is pretty funny, and I would recommend it just to play through as a, as a fun thing that I like as part of this game. Um, the full voice acting is really cool, so it's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Pio Pio Tetris which is a game that I think is very, very good, and that you should play. Um, i said that several times now. I right, hope you enjoyed this review of sorts, where I'm just sort of demonstrating the game mostly. Um, and I hope you, you know, thought this was a good video, <laughs> I guess. Let me know what you think about this game and other games that you like or I might like in the comments, or if you want, or don't. It's up to you. <laughs> Algorithm <laughs> Sign Cosign <laughs> Ringo's lines are super cute What a nerd I love her